National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with the Educational Television and Radio Center, presents... The subject is... Jazz. Gilbert Seldes. This program, Jazz Today. Critic and chronicler of the lively arts, Gilbert Seldes. By the title Jazz Today, we hardly mean that in this half hour we'll present and discuss all the ways in which jazz is played all over the world at this moment. We mean something more modest. In past programs of this series, our musicians have frequently recreated earlier jazz styles. They're accomplished and versatile enough to do this. So we have presented what you might call reasonable facsimiles of the many ways in which jazz has been played. Today, our musicians will play as they think jazz should be played, in their individual styles as soloists, and in this first number, as a group. Here is Billy Taylor's trio, playing Billy Taylor's improvisation number three.
I have noticed what other people have watched the program have noticed a much more intense use of the left hand. Isn't this rather unusual in jazz piano? Well, as far as the way I try to use it, it is, I think. I try to use it melodically as well as rhythmically so that I get more than one melody going. That is uh, a sort of jazz counterpoint. You're rather breathless, Billy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> actually, you're wearing at least three hats on this program because in addition to playing the piano, you are a composer and you're leader of the combo. Uh, as the combo includes other people who lead their own combos, what does it feel like to lead a combo of leaders? Well, normally this is a rather difficult thing because uh, each leader has his own, wa own way of playing and his own ideas about how music should be played. But I'm very fortunate in my uh, choice and the availability of the leaders that I was able to get for this show because they're not only wonderful leaders, but they're wonderful men to play with. And the cohesion that we've been able to get on the few shows that we have played together has been one that I've been very happy about. Including? Well, uh, um, the leaders, of course, include Tony Scott, Tony Scott who is one of my very favorite. I want to talk about. Because <laughs> I am, like yourself, a vast admirer of Tony Scott, the way he is and the way he blows today. But I'm fascinated by one thing in this particular. At the time, I know, when Tony arrived in the jazz scene, his instrument, the clarinet, was literally in the hands of two people, and both men of prodigious talent. You know they are, Benny Goodman and Artie Shaw. And, Tony, a question <coughs> to you. What does a youngster do? when the field he wants to enter is populated by giants? Well, the only thing to do, Gilbert, is to find yourself. And um, in the case of Benny and Artie, I guess I imitated them till I was about 17, and then I felt the urge to create something of my own. And listening to many other instruments, because you uh, don't always just learn uh, from clarinet players. If you're a clarinetist, you should try to listen to other instruments, and you'll get something from them. And I think the two biggest influences in my life of jazz and music have been um, Ben Webster, and Charlie Parker. Not clarinetists? No, just uh, the, not imitating either, just influences in terms of how they play and why they play. Well, that is, of course, what we're interested in. You become not an imitator, but an individual player. And the number with which we'll demonstrate this is Blues for an American Friend by Tony Scott, Excuse with me. Tony Scott and our <coughs> combo. Blues for an African friend. Sorry. <laughs> Very big difference. Yes. <laughs>
I'm not sure that Tony Scott's correction of my mistaken title was audible. The number he just played is correctly called Blues for an African Friend by Tony Scott. Now, jazz itself, as often said, is the, the new great sound in our time, and we believe it. But within jazz, new sounds constantly come up, uh, such as those that Tony has found, and as Edmund Thigpen had to discover for himself. Now, to get new sounds out of drums and cymbals might seem virtually an impossibility. So tell us, Edmund, what were you actually looking for? Well, I was looking for a way in which to express myself, not only rhythmically, but uh, musically. So I had to find tones, sound of, of a tone quality. So I found it, I knew I could do this on the drum. You uh, get effects in classical and legitimate training uh, when you're using the cymbal for uh, ocean and so forth. From the African rhythms and the Afro-Cuban rhythms, I learned about conversation between drums. So therefore, I've tried to combine both of these using the jazz set as it is. So that, in, in effect, you are transferring Afro-Cuban sounds to the regular instruments of jazz. That's correct. And the number in which this will be featured, Edmund Thicken and the battery, or the traps, or whatever you call his multiple instrument, is Titoro. <laughs> Among the facts of life in jazz that we haven't emphasized is that jazz musicians have to make a living. They found many ways to do this, in nightclubs and recording on the air. One way is to be on the staff of a broadcasting network, as our trumpet Doc Severson is with NBC. This, of course, requires playing in all the range of music. Now, assuming, Doc, that your heart's in the right place, you love jazz best of all, how do you maintain your feeling for jazz when you have to play so many other styles? Well, Gilbert, uh, I make a very great effort to listen to uh, modern records at home. And of course, I get around to the places where it's being played properly. And in this case, I'm fortunate enough to work with a very fine group. And the influence is, is great for me. And then, too, uh, in my work here on the NBC staff, why, whatever I have to do, I try to incorporate uh, what I learn 
um, of the modern feeling into what I'm doing. Doc, you mean that uh, you're playing jazz we were supposed to play in the classics? Let's keep it a big fat secret. <laughs> All right, we will. Uh, the numbers is very famous for the use of the trumpet is Dizzy Gillespie's Wouldn't You, and that makes it the natural choice for Doc Severinsen and our combo. <laughs> One of the ways in which jazz constantly transforms itself is by inventing or absorbing new instruments. Perhaps the most versatile of the lot is the guitar, which supplanted the banjo. Our master of the guitar is Mundell Lowe, and the first question, Mundell, is, is the guitar always electrified? No, it isn't, Gilbert. Uh, it depends on what you want to do with it. For instance, uh, if you want to get a smaller sound, it's played without the electric. If you want to get a bigger sound, you add the electric. Yes. Uh, is it difficult to learn either simply or electric? Well, it's difficult because in this country and in the development of the guitar, there's no set school for learning it. Like the piano hmm. has a classical background. There's a certain way that you study the piano. Well, it's not true with the guitar, so that you have to go about it in your own way, and sometimes it gets pretty hazardous. And uh, uh, can you, well, is it as fixed as a piano as regard to where the notes are that you play? No. For instance, uh, there's one key on the piano where you find middle C. Now, on the guitar, yeah. there are three spots. Well, actually, four spots. Here, 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 and here. So and which one, uh, how do you know which one to play? Well, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes it, I suppose, rather difficult. On the other hand, it is... Extraordinarily personal, I know, and you yourself have played it in many different ways, haven't you? There are many ways to play it. You can play it in a rhythm section as a rhythm instrument. Uh, you can use it as uh, with a solo instrument, like another horn, for instance, mm -hmm. or you can use it just as an accompanying oh, instrument. There are many ways. That's pretty good. Now, in this next number, we're not only going to hear the <coughs> guitar, which we featured, but the instrument which looks clumsy and yet delivers such beautiful sounds, namely the bass violin. Now, this is generally used merely to emphasize a beat. In this number, it provides actually a melodic background as well. And it's played by Earl May, a member of Billy Taylor's trio, which becomes a quartet with the addition of Mundell Lowe to play Q Blue. <laughs>
when I was mentioning the various ways that jazz musicians earn their living, follow their profession, I omitted one, and that is being a freelance, a pretty chancy way. In Jimmy Cleveland's case, freelancing means, however, working almost all the time, but with different groups and at different jobs. And is that harder, is that harder, Jimmy, than working with one group steadily? No, I find it more of a pleasure, uh, especially in the case when, uh, of a jazz musician that's trying to reach his potential. Uh, it gives you more of an opportunity to uh, develop your talent by working with different, different uh, organizations, different bands. It keeps you on your toes also, I should say. That's right. I want to ask yeah. you a thing that I've heard at times. Is playing with a large band less interesting, more interesting uh, than playing with different small combinations? Well, I don't think we could say that it would be uh, uh, less inter interesting in, any, in the sense of the word, because uh, if you love music, everything is of, of vital importance and it's an interest there. Try it here. The number that's going to feature Jimmy Cleveland and his trombone is simply called Posterity. talking of jazz as it's played today, and our talk is naturally concentrated on the players and the instruments, and we've let the music speak for itself. We shall discuss the composer of contemporary jazz music as a prelude to the future of jazz in a later program. In between, that is next week, we shall turn to one of the other significant facets of jazz, its effect on relation to other forms of music, and our guest will be the eminent American composer Aaron Copeland. On the subject is jazz.
program is presented in cooperation with the Educational Television and Radio Center. This has been an NBC television production. This is National Educational Television.